The idea behind Mesic or Mesic 2 is that you can have a single public key that represents a group of participants. And every member of this group of participants has their own key. But what you do in Mesic is you combine them all into one key. So from the perspective of the blockchain, from the perspective of validators, there's just one key. And you can't tell whether this is a single key that represents one person or a single key that represents a group of signers. And the Mesic 2 protocol allows all of these individual key holders together to interactively produce a single signature that is a valid signature on a transaction with the combined key. So this whole group of participants is able to act as a single signer. And the cool thing here is that each individual signer is able to retain their own key material. And they, they never, even when they're interacting with each other, they never reveal their own key material. So if any one signer doesn't like a transaction, they have veto power, basically. Like they, so like the, the policy this represents is every single one of these signers agrees on the transaction. The cool thing here is that, you know, you get this, this scalability benefit and this privacy benefit together. And with Taproot, there's even a little bit more of a benefit because in Taproot, if you can produce a single signature that authorizes this transaction, that's very cheap. And as soon as you need to go past a single signature, you need to introduce what's called a script spend. And there's just a, a bit of extra data that you got to throw on, on chain. Um, and you wind up costing yourself like an extra 30 or 40 bytes or something. So idea behind Musig is that you can take a single key and have it represent a group of people. Okay, and then there's an interactive protocol here that's actually surprisingly non-trivial. So I, I sort of casually said that like the individual signers retain their key material and like they can't like trick each other into giving things up. But when you create an interactive protocol, you've got to think what happens when signers lie to each other or what happens when one signer says like sends some data to a participant and different data to the other participants or what happens when a signer like does half the protocol and then like doesn't reply anymore, just like drops off? Or what if a signer um, just replies, but like extremely slowly kind of thing? Or what if he replies so slowly that some participant thinks he dropped off, but other ones don't? You know, there's, there's a million different failure modes here. With um, with Speedsig 2, conveniently, if anything goes wrong, the signature doesn't show up. That's kind of like the nice thing about having this like all or nothing kind of, kind of model. 